So welcome everybody to the November meetup. Uh, just a few quick announcements. Special thanks to our sponsors. So if you're just JetBrains, DevExpress, Ozcode, Reflex Software, Telerik, Stackify, RevDebug, PointSmith Tools, Nebron, No Storage Press, AS Pose, and Code Magazine. And a special thank you to our annual financial sponsor, which is Microsoft. Um, even though we have all those sponsors, we are still looking for uh, local sponsors. So if you know of a company that would like to sponsor us, uh, please uh, reach out to me. You can get me at the break or email me. So that would be great. As well, uh, after the meetup, uh, if you could please rate it. We read all the ratings. Um, they definitely help us, as well as I know the speakers love to get feedback as well. So if you could uh, send us your feedback, that would be great. If you are looking for a job, there could be, I haven't checked recently, but there could be postings actually on our website. So if you are looking for a job, check out the postings page. If you are um, know of a job, you can always post there and postings are free. Is there anybody currently looking for work or looking for workers? Yes, no? It's a safe space. You can put up your hand if you want to. Yes? We're looking for workers. You're looking for workers? And which company is it? It's a security company called A Privacy. A Privacy? And what kind of uh, developers or? Uh, uh, database developers. Okay. And Java. Oh, nice. Okay. And is it a privacy.com? Yep. Perfect. So you all heard that. So, and next, in January, we're actually going to be doing a, a database session. So if you want to come back and announce it then, I'm sure you'll get more DBAs there. So. <coughs> a few upcoming events. Um, if you read in the newsletter, we will not be hosting a session for December. So um, you guys can stay at home and spend time with your families. And uh, happy holidays and happy new year and all of that. And then our next session will actually be in January, January 25th. Michael Swart, who is an MVP, uh, who actually works downtown in, um, at Desire to Learn, is gonna be coming to talk at, about high concurrency in SQL Server. He just came back from SQL PaaS in early November, so he is an excellent speaker and he speaks at conferences uh, all across North America, so he'll actually be able to here to talk about bottlenecking and latency and deadlocking and all that kind of stuff. So. As well, tomorrow night, Tom Walker and his group in London is actually um, going to be talking about Connect and what came out of Connect, and they're going to be doing Q and A and wrap up. And Mickey McDonald from Microsoft will be there as well, so they're going to be doing a um, just an overview of what actually came out of there. So if you're interested in that, that's going to be tomorrow night in London. As well, on December fifteenth, uh, the Mississauga.net group uh, OB actually. Uh, so if you want to go the other way down to 401, uh, it's going to be hosting a bunch of lightning talks, and I believe there's two or three lightning talks. So that's Thursday, December 15th. Uh, he gets a really good turnout at his group. It's at Tech Systems in Mississauga, and uh, you can go check that out just up on Thorpe Road, um, and they're a very active group there as well. And finally, uh, Hacker Nest is skipping uh, December as well, and they're going to be having a January Tech Sales Show. And um, it's January 9th, and you can already see they have 36 people going, and Lori goes. So if you actually want to know more about what these things and what they actually do there, you can talk to Lori at the break. She goes often, and um, I'm sure that number is already past 36. They usually get 70 or 80 people that are going to these things. So that's it for the slides. One final announcement. We have <clears throat> t-shirts donated by Microsoft at the back. On the actual stand are XLs, and then there's two, two, um, two XLs, so double XLs actually on the box. So feel free to take a t-shirt on the way out. They will be <coughs> traveling to London tonight. So um, last chance, grab a t-shirt before you go. So uh, that's it for me. And I will pass it over to Rob. Thank you. Give me a sec to uh, get this all. Most of my talk is demos. Um, but I, I, I do have some intro stuff, right? Um, so first off, thank you for coming out. Um, the talk we will eventually be seeing is um, building your first app, it's actually going to be apps, um, with uh, the Microsoft Graph, which is not to be confused with the Office Graph. So the Microsoft Graph is, um, well, it's, it's, its predecessor, the Office, or its companion, um, the Office 365 APIs, or a set of APIs you can use to interact with different parts of um, Office 365. So it could be Exchange, it could be SharePoint. It, um, there's lots of different pieces that you can interact with through these APIs. Now when the APIs were first developed, they were developed by different teams. Um, do you want to, it was already going. Or here, let me, um, 
So let's see. Let's see. Let me just change a resolution here. Did I knock it off? Um, well, let me just change the resolution and see if that fixes it. Either that or we can just, uh, can just keep going. Right? So anyway, we have these, these APIs, right? So um, there's basically different endpoints depending on what part of Office 365 you want to talk to. So depending on which team um, built up, so there's going to be like 800 things we're opening here. Uh, which team built the, those APIs, right? Um, so it was a little bit problematic that when you wanted to use these APIs, you would have to authenticate with the different um, services. This is all my, this is really important. Here. So what Microsoft did was they created um, one, they call it one endpoint to rule them all, right? So it's the Microsoft Graph endpoint. So all really the Microsoft Graph is, is a single entry point into the Office 365 APIs, okay? Um, so for those of you who just walked in, my machine just blue screen, so we're gonna have a little bit of a delay getting going, but I will try to get going as quickly as I can. Um, so the Microsoft Graph is really that single endpoint, and then um, the Office 365 APIs are the actual services, these RESTful services that expose access to uh, the content and functionality of Office 365. So what the session is, is if I want, what do I need to do to be able to build apps that consume these services? Um, so the, the starting point, there's, there's two real places that you can go if you want to start doing this. And, and one of the reasons why I put together this talk um, was because when I would see, initially I would see like talks on this or I would see demos or, or videos from Microsoft and so on, they always seem to start at step three. And they would go, okay, so you have this, and you have this, and you have this, and I'm like, I don't think I have that, and I don't think I've ever done that, and I, don't, I have no idea what that is. So I can't even start, I have no context whatsoever to follow this along, right? Um, so it was, okay, let's just assume you have a computer, and you have an email address, and let's go from there, right? What, what, what do I need? to do to be able to build stuff on here. And what the, the tools that I'm gonna talk about that are available to you for free to get started, what's, what's the limitations of those tools? What, where can I go and where am I gonna be blocked and have to have the, you know, a full tenant and that kind of stuff, right? So the first thing you'll need if you're gonna work with the Office 365 APIs is an Office 365 tenant, okay? Um, so, um, if you already have a tenant, that's great. We'll talk about how you can use the Azure Management Portal to interact with Azure Active Directory, to register an app with Azure Active Directory, um, and then build an app that uses the information that you provide while you're going through this registration process. But if you don't already have an Office 365 tenant, um, you can get one for free. It's a single user tenant, and the, you, you get a license for a year. Um, but after the year ends, if the tenant expires, you can always just get another one, right? It's a free tenant. Um, so that's where the email address comes in. You're gonna have to have an email address to be able to register the tenant. And then once you've done that, then, you can, that, that, then that's a starting point you can use to be able to do the things that I'm gonna be doing throughout the talk. And I'll show you, I'm not gonna show you how to register for the tenant. Um, you can just Google uh, how to do that. Um, but I'll show you how you register apps when you have one of these free tenants because um, you don't get access to the full um, Windows Azure Management Portal that you do if you have a paid for tenant or like a multi-user multi um, trial tenant, okay? Um, and that was one of the things that really kind of got me when I first started with this stuff because I, I had a, um, a trial tenant and they would, you know, the, the demo would say, okay, we'll go to your Windows Azure Manager portal and go to the, your Active Directory and go to the app. And I'm like, I can't get there. I, there's no way for me to get there. So how do I register an app if I don't have this thing? And I'll, and I'll show you how to do that. Um, obviously, if you're gonna build stuff, um, at least 
On the Microsoft platform, you're going to need Visual Studio. Um, you don't have to use Visual Studio, but I will be doing that. Um, and if you don't have Visual Studio or, or on a machine that you want and you want to use it, you can download and use Visual Studio Community 2013 or 2015. So the free version of Community or Visual Studio, the Community Edition, will work just fine um, in terms of all the stuff I'm going to show you. In fact, you'll see as I'm doing the demos that I, I, I think at least my 2015 is community. I'm not sure if my 2013 uh, Visual Studio on this VM is community or not. Um, let's see, what else can I talk about while this is going on? Uh, so we talked about getting the free trial tenant. We talked about um, Visual Studio Community. Um, so the, the, the place I'm going to start here, and let me just, uh, this, this should work here, um, is dev.office.com. So we'll go to dev.office.com. This is the um, Office Developer Community Portal. And um, from here, you can go to getting started. And there's a bunch of different areas, and the one that we're interested in here is the Microsoft Graph. Now, notice that I'm at dev.office.com. I click getting started within dev.office.com. But when I click getting started here, you'll see that the URL changes to graph.microsoft.io. So graph.microsoft.io is the landing page for the Microsoft Graph, right? So I could have also just gone to graph.microsoft.io and click getting started here. I'm taking to the same spot, okay? Um, and what we see here is um, some a UI that you can use to sort of look at what the rest URLs look like. So for example, if I want to make a call in to, um, for me, right, to get my email messages in my inbox, um, then this is the REST API call that I'm gonna make to be able to do that. So we can get, right, I mean, obviously this is a, a small subset of what you can do, but these are some of the major areas. So you can work with your um, email, you can work with events, you can work with contacts. Files are files in OneDrive within Office 365. You can work with users and groups and a whole bunch of other things with the API. And this is a sort of getting started thing you can work with, right? Now, this isn't working with your Office 365 tenant. It's working with this sort of trial tenant or, or sample tenant that Microsoft has created that's populated with data, right? So if I say I want to go get my email here, I'm not getting my email. I'm getting the email from this sort of sample tag, right? But what you can do with this data is you can see the shape of the response coming back, right? So you can say, okay, well, I'm gonna make this REST call. It's gonna return me back this JSON payload. And from this, I can figure out, okay, well, what, what data do I need to extract from here? How do I build my REST API call? What I'm, what, you know, how am I gonna order the results back? What um, pieces of data am I gonna select? And, and, and so on, okay? So you can use this to work with the sort of sample tenant, or you can go to the Graph Explorer, and the Graph Explorer will let you work with your tenant. So you log in with your credentials for your tenant, um, and then you can make calls directly against your tenant and see the, the data that's coming back from that, right? So the Graph Explorer works with your tenant. Um, the getting started here works with a sample tenant. And while we're doing this, let me just, uh, yeah, it was definitely unplanned. Um, so let me just do that. Let's do that. Cool. Uh, so let me just fire up Windows Explorer here. Dropbox. I mean, I have PowerPoint, but I don't. It, really, it's the demos that are important part. So let me just start with those. And we need that. 
Um, I can do the demos in Visual Studio 2013 or 2015. Um, I'll just pick 2013. Uh, again, it's, the, the experience is going to be exactly the same regardless of the version of Visual Studio that I pick. Uh, this will probably take a moment to open up, I think, here, yeah. Um, so let's get back to here. Now, also on this Getting Started page, one, you can see what the shapes of, um, what, well, first off, what the, the URLs are or the URIs for the REST service calls. And then you can also see um, sort of the shape of the data. You can also see information about what parameters you're expecting, right? Um, you can also get these sample apps uh, depending on what kind of platform you want to target. So you can see that there's, there's several here. Um, so uh, I'm going to be building ASP.MVC applications and also I'm going to build a couple of console applications. But you can see that um, you can work with Angular, PHP, there's some mobile applications you can get started with. So um, it, it, there's lots of different um, resources for the different kinds of platforms that you might want to build applications for and how to get started with those. The, the sample applications that they give you, so let's just, let's just go through here for now. Um, it's, it, it's kind of hit and miss. So they rev them fairly regularly and sometimes what they give you is sort of useful and sometimes what they give you is not really useful at all because sometimes they don't even give you a complete application. They have like these placeholders that you need to fill in but there's no real instructions anywhere, at least here, that tell you how, how to fill in those placeholders. Um, so when I first started doing this talk, I actually downloaded the app and walked through it um, the, the last time I did that, it was basically worthless, so I'm, I'm not going to go through that process. Um, but there are sample apps. The only one I've ever used personally is this ASP.NET on MVC one. So I can't speak to the other samples and the, the quality of the samples and how much they're going to help you in the getting started process. But there are sample apps here you can, you can definitely explore. All right. Um, so there it is. So the, I'm going to start out by building um, an ASP.NET MVC application. And really, at least in my experience, the most difficult part of working with the, the Microsoft Graph is figuring out the authenticate, how, to, how to authenticate. Um, there's sort of, now there's two versions of Azure Active Directory, at least how you authenticate with Azure Active Directory. Um, so there's a version that, that I'm going to mostly work with, and there's um, one called V2. Um, with both have different capabilities. There's different libraries you can use um, in order to, to go through the authentication process. So I'm going to be using ADAL or the Active Directory Access Library, but there's also a new one, MSAL, for working with the V2. Um, I think it's the Microsoft Access Library is the what the acronym stands for. You can use OpenID Connect. Um, there's Owen stuff, middleware that you can use. There's lots of different libraries and ways that you can go through this process. Um, what I'm going to show you will work whether, whether you've registered your app through the Windows Azure Manager Portal, which is using the V1 authentication, or the, I don't, I don't even know what they call it, the, the new portal, at least a temporary one, for registering V2 kinds of applications. The code I'm going to show you will work regardless of which way you registered your application. Okay. Um, so let me just uh, open up a browser here. And I apologize, my VM uh, does take a while to sort of get to the point where it's it's uh, not it doesn't take forever to open up everything. So we'll probably be a few minutes um, during this sort of warming up period. Um, See, maybe I can just do it over here. Maybe that'll be easier. Okay, so this is the um, V1 of the Windows Azure Manager Portal. Um, and we're going to register an application with Azure Active Directory. So 
right here it's my Azure Active Directory. I can click on that and then I can click on the Applications tab at the top here. And I'm going to filter this to applications that my company owns to see apps that I've registered to work with. Okay? So, I mean, they're all just sort of like demo applications here. Right? Now, as I mentioned, if you have the free single user tenant, you can't get to here. It doesn't let you do that. Right? So, if you're, if you're using that and you want to register an app, then um, you're going to go to uh, this URL here instead. So it's apps.dev.microsoft.com. Okay, and then you're going to sign in. Um, I've probably already signed in, so I can just click my applications. Oh, no, I need to sign in. So, um, And you can see I have a few applications that I've registered um, here. And if you notice, uh, talk, first graph app, file demo two, file demo three, file demo four, you can see the same things over here. Right? So because I'm logged in with the same set of credentials, registering an app through um, the, the new app registration portal um, is really registering the app You'll see that in my Azure Active Directory portal here, because it's all basically going. You know, I'm, I'm registering the app in the same tenant, okay, for the same tenant. Um, doesn't necessarily have to be the case. I have another tenant I could use. I could register the apps with that. But I want to show you, if you register an app with this UI, how it looks in the other UI. So that's why I'm using the same, the same credentials. Um, so let's come back over here. Okay, I've got two inches of Visual Studio, so let's close that down. Uh, let's come back here. Let's create a new project. Oh, come on. If you spin your mouse this way, it goes faster. That's what I've been doing. All right, well, let's just get started here registering a new app. So I'm going to click Add an App. Uh, I'm going to call this uh, C T T D N U G uh, dot demo 01. And click create application. So the app is going to have credentials. So there you can see the app ID. It's also called the client ID. So that's basically the username um, for the app. And then I can generate a, a password for the app as well. Right? And I'm going to need those things. So let's come back over here. Let's create a new um, ASP.web application. Oh, come on. Yeah, it's going to say Visual Studio is busy. Sorry, at this point we just have to kind of wait. So, um, okay, let's see. T -t -t -g demo one. Want an MVC application? I don't want to host in the cloud. Uh, click OK. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that my app only uses SSL. Um, while you're while you're communicating with um, Office 365 and, and the, the Microsoft Graph, you're sending credentials like you're authenticating. We don't want any of that stuff sent clear text over uh, the wire. So um, and I'm also going to need to know the, the URL for the application. So that's the first thing I'm going to do once um, once this all starts up here. I guess this is a good time. Any questions at all at this point? No. Okay. I would imagine the endpoints enforce SSL, would they not? Like if you try to no query them over HTTP, it'll work. It'll work. Really? Yeah. What year is it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Surprising. Here's some rope. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and in fact, um, that was one of the things about the sample apps that you download. 
At least the NBC one, it, it, it uses HTTP. Oh, really? Not HTTPS, yeah. I gotta figure out what it is. When I first start up, the disk is just hammering the disk for like five minutes. And that's what's causing this, this you know, like disk access is the slowest thing you'd have in a VM. So I'm not exactly sure why it's going through that process. Uh, let's see if there's anything else I can do over here while we're waiting. Um, so I need the client ID. Let me just start a notepad here. I need the client ID, so let me just grab that and copy it to the clipboard. And then I'm going to generate a new password. And in both UIs, you only get one chance to copy it. So one, it's shown to you one time, um, you can copy it, and then once, once after that, you can't get it again. So always make sure that you, you copy and store that. Um, I'm going to do, I do platform after here. And the next thing is, what permissions are you going to request? So the app has to request permissions to be able to access different pieces of the graph. And there's delegated permissions, and there's application permissions. So if you do app and user authentication, right? So I'm um, Office 365 is allowing this user to access these resources through this app, right? Then you're talking about delegated permissions, right? The permissions are being delegated to the user who's authenticated. If you're doing app only authentication, right, where I'm just making I'm making requests to Office 365 APIs um, just in the, in the context of the app, right? So I may, let's say for example, I want to build a web service or a web job or something like that. That's app only authentication. Then you're doing application permissions. So I'll click add here. And you can see there's a bunch of different things. So I can work with my calendars. I can work with contacts. I can work with Active Directory. Um, I can work with uh, OneDrive for Business. So I'm gonna say, that's what I'm going to say. I'm going to read files from OneDrive for Business. Uh, I can work with groups. I can work with mail, um, notes, sites, and so on. So there's lots of different things available to me in terms of permissions I want. Um, so I'm just going to say that I want to be able to um, read files from my OneDrive for Business. And I'll click OK. And at this point, these, these are just optional. You don't have to worry about that. I'll come down and just save, save this out. Okay. So at this point, hopefully this has come back. Yeah, it is. So what I'm going to do, the first thing I'm going to do is, if I select a project in Visual Studio, you can see that by default SSL is not enabled. So I'm going to enable that. And then I'm going to copy this um, URL and come over to the project properties here. And then over in the web tab, I'm going to say that when the app starts up, I want to go to the SSL URL. So we'll, we'll always be using SSL there. Okay, now also back in my app registration, um, I'm going to now click add platform. I'm going to say that I'm going to be consuming this through a web platform and I'm going to put in the URL to my application. Okay? So we need that as well. So I'm going to come back down here and click save. Alright, so I registered the application for this web application. Um, I'm going to say I'm just saying that the application has the or is going to request rights um, to read files and read information about uh, users, the current user. And now I'm going to come back to my application. I need to store those credentials to be able to make these calls. So I'm going to open up the web config file. And I'm going to add two settings into the web config file. One, store the client ID, um, which is the, the username for the app. And the second one, to store uh, the client secret, which is the password for the app. So um, I'll just paste those in there and come back to notepad. So this is the client ID. I'm gonna paste that in and then we can uh, get the client secret or the password and paste that in here. Uh, whoops. Try that one more time. Okay, 
and save that off. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to start out, I want to have a very simple UI where when the app starts up, um, the, you just click a button to say, okay, let's, let's start the process of finding information about the files I have in my OneDrive for business. So if I just go to IE here, and um, let me just go to uh, the SharePoint site, and I'll sign in using the same credentials here. And then I'll go to my OneDrive for business. Oh yeah, there we go, thanks. Um, you'll see I have a folder, and I have a few files in there, right? So there's a folder called Share With Everyone, and I have a few files, sample six to nine there, okay? Um, so this is, what, this is basically I want to read out the names of the folder and the files um, in the application. Um, so let's just come back over here. We'll start by going to the view for the home uh, controller, the index method on the home controller. Um, if you're not familiar with how ASP.NBC works, I'll give you a very, very brief overview. Uh, I'm going to make a request to a URL. Um, that URL will go to a routing engine. The routing engine will say based on the shape or content of the URL. Um, I'm going to, you want to do this, um, that says, I, I'm going to call this method on this controller, that'll run some code and it'll eventually pass off to a view. So we're not making a request to a page within a site, we're making a request to a method on a class and that will redirect to, uh, to the actual UI, right? So a view is the UI, so this is the, the startup UI. And I'm going to replace it again with something very simple here, which just as a button I'm going to use to start off the, the process of reading um, those files. So let me just get rid of this UI and put that. Get all of this is a button, right? And the button is going to go to the login method on the home controller. So it's going to redirect there. That'll make a call out to that method on the class, okay? So we'll come back over to our home controller. Under controllers here, I'm gonna to go to the home controller. And we need to implement that method called login. So I'm gonna come down here and it looks like this. All right, so um, I'm gonna to go to my configuration settings, my app settings, and get the client ID and client secret. Um, I'm gonna make sure that they're there, that they've been configured. And then I'm going to actually go through the beginning of the authentication process. So this authentication context type comes from the um, Azure Active Directory library that I talked about, the authentication library. So we're gonna need that. So I'm just going to go manage NuGet packages in Visual Studio. And I'm going to go to um, online here and search for ADAL. And there's the Active Directory authentication library. I'm going to add that new get package into my application and click accept. And then close this down. And now I can resolve some of these types. Um, so I'll resolve the task type. That's from th the threading configuration manager. Here is from system, system configuration. Uh, this is from the Azure Active Directory authentication library that I just made a reference to. And Really, the key, the, the first thing you'll see here is that I'm making a call to get authorization request URL, right? And notice I'm passing in um, the client ID. So what I'm saying here is I need the user of this application to um, authenticate with you. And they're authenticating for this app, to, or authenticating to be able to use this app. That's where the client ID comes in. Um, and they're also authenticating to be able for that app to make calls to the Microsoft Graph. And that's where graph.microsoft.com comes in. That's the root URL or the root endpoint for the service calls to the Microsoft Graph. And then the login direct URI is saying once that process completes, then go to the home method, or sorry, go to the authorized method on the home controller. Okay? So I'm currently in the login method 
in the home controller, right? So you can see that the type up here is the home controller. I'm in the login method. So once the user's logged in, or once the user is authenticated, then come back to the, the authorized um, method on this same controller, right? So uh, I'm going to go get the authorized uh, the authorization URL, and I'm going to redirect to that URL. Another important thing here is what's called the authority, which is this, this URL here. So login.microsoft.online.com is the base. And then you either have common, which means you have a multi-tenant application where people from multiple tenants will be going to log in. So they'll enter their credentials and then um, the Microsoft Graph and Azure App Directory will figure out which specific tenant they're targeting. If, you, if you're working with a single tenant, then you actually put your tenant ID that where common was, right? So you can see robwindsor 2onmicrosoftcom That's my tenant ID, okay? So I'm saying that um, the user who is going to be authenticating has to be somebody who's in the Azure Active Directory for my specific tenant, right? All right, so this is the user login part. Uh, now let's go to the authorize uh, method here. Question, is everybody's tenant going to be where yours has Rob Windsor too? Everyone's going to be like my company name dot on Microsoft.com? Oh, we, well, yeah, unless you've configured uh, what they call a vanity URL. So you've you configured it to be your company name dot com or dot net or whatever. Then you could then you, you use that. Okay, so this is the authorized, right? So again, I have the same authority, <coughs> login.microsoft.com, robwindsor 2onmicrosoftcom When I complete the user authentication process, I'm gonna be sent back what's called an authorization code, okay? And that authorization code will be given to me um, as part of the request, and we can see that I'm using that there, right? Then what I need to do is to get an access token which actually allows me to make service calls to the Microsoft Graph, okay? So if you're doing app and user authentication, it's a two-step process. The user does their part of the authentication. That gets sent back an authorization code. And then the app then does their authentication, right? So notice here in this acquire token by authorization code async, I'm passing in the authorization code for the user and the credentials of the app, right? So this is where now the app and the user full authentication comes in and it's the access token that I can actually use to be able to now make service calls to the Microsoft graph, okay? So I'm gonna store the access token in session state so I can use it um, throughout the life of this application, or at least for the life of the access token. Um, the access token has a lifetime, usually it's an hour, right? Um, after that, you'll have to get a new access token, and you can do that by going through this entire process again, or you can do, use it by using what's called a refresh token, which I'll talk about in the second step of the demos, okay? So once I've done this, now I've actually completed the authentication process. I have the access token. I'm now going to redirect to the index method on the file controller. This is where I'm actually going to go and make the REST call to get the file information from Office 365 and then render it out to my UI. Right, so what we'll do is we'll go to the controllers node here in my project and just say add uh, controller. And I'm going to create an empty MVC controller We'll call this guy the file controller. And then the code for the file controller is going to look like this. All right, so first off, let me just resolve these uh, type names here, add the appropriate using statements.
Okay, so on the index method of the file controller, the first thing I'm going to do is make sure that I have an access token. Um, if I don't have an access token, it's going to redirect back to the initial page that we, or we'll see, the page that has the button on it. Okay? Um, if I do have an access token, then I'm going to call um, get file names async, passing in the access token as a parameter. All right, so here's get file names async. And really all this is, is I'm making a call, a Rust API call to the Microsoft graph. Right? So we're going to say that in the accept header, we want to say that the we're expecting back JSON um, from this call. And then also notice the authentication header value. So um, I'm going to have a, an authentication header that has the word bearer followed by the actual access token that I got back from the authentication process. Okay. And the call I'm making is here. So I'm going to say graph.microsoft.com v1, this is the versioning. So currently there's only two versions, v1 and beta. So beta is volatile, it'll change as they're doing work on the Microsoft Graph, as they add in new um, services, as they change services that they're working on. Um, v1 is not volatile, it's, it's set. It's like this is the version of the API. Um, eventually they'll have version one dot whatever or two or two dot whatever and so on, right? So that you know when you build your application versus a specific version of the API that that's not going to change out from underneath you as they evolve, right? Um, and then the, the other, the last part here is um, me.drive.root.children. So I'm going to say go to the root folder of my OneDrive for business and give me information about the children inside of there and the children are files and folders. Right? So this request is going to show me the information that we see here. That I have this folder and I have these four files. Right? Now coming back to um, the, the, the samples here, right? So if I want to get files, you can see I have the same call here, right? 1.0 drive root children. So if I want to see what the, what the payload is going to look like, what the response body is going to look like, I can see that here. Right, um, so I have a created by user information, created date and time, e tag, which is effectively the version number um, for this item, an ID, we've got some modified information. Um, there's the name, so that's important, right? Now, this is again the sample data from the Microsoft sample tenant, it's not my actual tenant. Um, and then, if it's a file, you'll have a, a node or an element called file property called file. If it's a folder, there'll be a property called folder. So that's how you can distinguish between the files and the folders. Okay? All we're going to use for this example is the name. I want to write out the name of the file or I want to write out the name of the folder. Okay? Um, so coming back to the code here, the rest is just basically making the actual request. So I'm using the HTTP client type to make that request um, and then just parsing out the JSON coming back. So I'm going to have a dictionary of, of uh, string object coming back, that's a dynamic, and I'm just going to go through and for each item within that collection I want to just get the, get the name property on each of the items and write that out to the UI. Okay, so this is just basically standard making a REST call in C-sharp, um, nothing, nothing unique at all to working with the um, with the Microsoft Graph here. Okay, so we're going to run the app. Sorry, was there a question? No. We we'll run the app. We're going to be presented. We're going to go to the um, index controller on the home. Or sorry, index method on the home controller. That will show the page with the button. Um, when I click the button, what it's going to do is go get the URL required to authenticate the user will redirect off to there, the user will do the authentication, it'll send back the authorization code, it will then take the authorization code and exchange that with the credentials of the app for an access token, and then we'll use that access token to authenticate the REST API call to get the file information. Okay? Cool. So I'll click this, we get redirected off to where I'm going to, the user is going to authenticate for the app, Put in my credentials here.
If I registered, if I registered with the V2 or the new portal, so the one that I, I registered with, I'm going to be shown a trust dialog. If I registered with the um, Azure Active Directory portal, I won't be shown this, right? So this is a V2 thing. Um, so it's saying here that this app wants to be able to sign in as you and read your profile and also read your files, right? So you you can see here what permissions the app is requesting and you can choose to accept the, the permission request or you can choose to deny them, right? So I'm going to accept them, right? So this at this point, the access or the uh, authorization code has been sent back to my app. That's being, oh, and I got an error. The view index or master was not found or no view index supports this. Oh, did I, I, not did, I didn't do the file index, that's why. Okay, so that was I did that on purpose, of course, just to see, <laughs> you know, show you how to handle errors in the application. None of us caught it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so if you notice in my views, the file uh, view is currently empty, so I need to do implement the index. So I'll say um, add view. Uh, I need to create the index view. So the view name matches the method name um, on the controller. And then I just need to go here and whoops, do this. Um, so this is a strongly typed view. It's going to be passed in a collection of strings. So we'll say that the model type is I enumerable of string. We'll just iterate through the model. Each one of these is a string and write out that string um, to the UI. So let me save that off, run again, F5 here. So we're presented with the button, we're redirected off here. I log in again. At this time, we won't be shown the trust dialog because I've already trusted the app. Um, it's made the rest call to get the information from my OneDrive for business. And there we see the name of the folder and the name of the files coming out um, from, from the Microsoft Graph or the API associated with, uh, with the files um, service. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> So really, for me, you know, when I was first starting, trying to figure out those steps to authenticate and get the token, I knew I needed a token, and I knew how to make the rest of the API calls. It was just, how do I actually get, get that token, right? Um, so once you figure that out, and once you know the process, and again, there are different libraries you can use to, to do that. Um, OpenID Connect, I used ADAL, there's MSAL, there's other libraries you can use. And of course, I'm talking about working with Microsoft you know, applications. If you're working with, you know, you're building an Android app or an iOS app or something like that, you'll have different libraries that you'll use or different ways that you're going to go through this authentication process. But really, once you figure that out, the rest of it is just making API calls. And it, and it gets, gets pretty simple. Just figuring out what APIs are available, what do the calls look like, and so on. Um, so any questions at this point? Um, you want to do, a sh do you want to do a short break? Yeah, maybe five minutes. We'll okay. take a quick bio break, we'll do a short break, and then we'll come back, uh, try to be back at 7.30. That'd be 10 minutes, so it should be good. And if you haven't got a raffle ticket, please see Dan, and he will give you a